We're just going to remind ourselves a little bit about the basics of decimals. We start off, decimals just help us extend our um, place value system so that we can deal with fractions of a unit. So if we have a number like this one I've just written, 302,518, what does that all mean? Well, the 302 part of it is what we've been very familiar with in our place value. That is just to the left of the comma. But the comma 518, well, that comes to the right of the comma. And what does it all mean? Well, the 3 just tells us we've got three hundreds. The 0, no tens. The 2, we've got two units. The 5 in this place now to the right of the comma tells us we've got five tenths. Tenths being 1 over 10, which is the same as 0, 1. This 1 in this place tells us we've got one hundredth. And what is a hundredth? It's 1 over 100, which is 0, 0, 1. And this little 8 is 8 thousandths. And a thousandth is 1 over 1,000, which is 0, 0, 0, 1. So again, it's just extending our place value. OK, how would we write something like 5,002 and 32 over 100 as a decimal? Well, the 5002 part is easy, right? That's just the good old whole number that we've always written to the left. What does 32 over 100 mean? Well, what you've got is you've got 30 over 100 and another 2 over 100. And 30 over 100 is just the same as 3 over 10. So it's 3 tenths and 2 hundredths. So as a decimal, it'll be 5002, comma, 3 Two. Okay, try quickly for yourself in your homework book. Put in what would that look like as a decimal number. Pause the video now and do it quickly in your homework book. Okay, hopefully this was easy. Let's get a pen. You put 45 into this side, and 312 over 1,000 is going to give us comma 312. OK, let's have a look at which um, of two numbers is bigger. So let's look at, consider 54 comma 6 and 54 comma 1, 2, 3, and decide which of these two is bigger. Well, I'm going to start off by putting them in this place value table, which will help me decide which is bigger. Now, the first thing we need to do is, okay, obviously the 54s, that's the same in both. So those are not going to be relevant. What we need to look at is what's going on after the decimal comma. And we need to, first of all, just be very clear, which is bigger, tenths, hundredths, or thousandths? Now, what does tenths mean? Well, it's 1 over 10. So let's think of it in terms of chocolate bars. If we're talking about 1 tenth of a chocolate bar, what we mean is we've taken the chocolates and we've cut it up into 10 pieces. So you'll get a decent chunk of chocolate bar if you're talking about one tenth. But let's look at that, think about that same chocolate bar in relation to hundredths. What is one over a hundred? Well, that means you've taken that chocolate bar and you've cut it up into a hundred pieces. Can you see that each piece is going to be quite small? And even worse, one thousand, one thousandths, you're going to take that chocolate bar and you're going to cut it up into a thousand pieces. Can you see that each little piece will be really, really teeny? So one tenth are bigger than one hundredth and one hundredth is bigger than one thousandth. So when we want to compare numbers, we start off just by, we can ignore everything else, everything else and just look first at the tenths place and decide. Well, here you've got six tenths. And here you've only got one tenth. So certainly this is bigger than this. These other little pieces of this are really little pieces, right? Because they're only hundredths and thousandths, so they'll be really tiny pieces. They're not going to make up for the fact that here you've got six tenths and here you've got one tenth. So one tenth. So which of these two will be bigger? It will be 54,6 is bigger because... In the tenths place, you've got a bigger number. 
Okay, you try a quick comparison. I want you to have a look at which is bigger, 5,03 or 5,028. Pause the video now, do this in your homework book, and we'll go over it. Okay, so hopefully this is what you did. Pop them into this comparison table so they're all nicely in their place value. You can see easily that's the same, that's the same, but here you've got a difference. Here you've got three hundredths, whereas here you've got two hundredths, and so this one here will be the bigger one. We won't worry about the fact that you've got an eight here, because that's eight thousandths, and that's really tiny in comparison to the hundredths. So the fact that you've got three here versus two here tells you that this one is the bigger number. Okay, the other thing we like to be able to do is to convert it into um, a, the common fraction form and um, convert between writing it as a fraction and writing it as a decimal. So let's have a look here. If we've got to do 0, 0,125, well, let me get a pen, sorry, 0, 0,125, this is tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So we are dealing with 1, 2, 5 over 1,000. They ask you to make it in simplest form. Remember how to turn fractions into simplest form? What you've got to check is, is there something you can divide into the top that you can also divide into the bottom? Well, immediately I can see I can divide top and bottom by 5. 5 into 12 goes twice, remainder 2. 5 into 25 goes 5 times, so it's 25. And if I divide 5 into 1,000, I'll get 200. But that I can see I can still simplify. I can actually divide top and bottom here by 25. So 25 into 25 goes once. 25 into 200 goes 8 times. So I get 1 over 8. So 0, 0,125 I can write as a fraction as 1 over 8. Okay, I want you to try writing 0, 0,25 as a fraction now um, and then simplifying. So pause the video and do this in your homework books. Okay, so here we've got tenths, hundredths, so we've got 25 over 100. And now I can simplify and I can easily divide top and bottom by 25. So that's 1 and 25 goes into 100 four times, so it is a quarter. Okay, if we want to go from fraction to decimal, what we need to do is we need to take the decimal, that take the fraction that we have, and if we can just rewrite it as a fraction over 10 or over 100 or over 1,000 or in fact over 10,000, 100,000, whatever, it'll be very easy then to write it as a decimal. So let's deal with this one first, 4 over 25. I've got to think which of these... 10, 100, 1,000 would be a good one. So really what I've got to think of is, well, it obviously can't be 10, because, I mean, I can't go from 25 up to 10, you know, turn it into a 10, but I can turn it into something over 100, because 25 does go into 100. So that's what I'm going to do. Now I need to find the equivalent. Well, I know that what I've done to the bottom is multiply by 4, so to make an equivalent fraction, what I do to the top, what I do to the bottom, I must do exactly the same to the top. So I must multiply this top by 4 and I will get 16. So I've got 16 over 100 and that is very easy to turn into a decimal. Okay, I want you quickly to try this one. 3 over 125 written as a decimal. Pause the video now and do it. Okay, 3 over 125 you need to turn it into a fraction over a thousand. So what do you multiply one to five by to get to a thousand? Well, that you multiply by eight to get to a thousand. And so you need to multiply the top by eight to get an equivalent fraction. So you get 24 over a thousand. Now 24 over a thousand means, and let's just think of our thing here. This is the tenths our place value, this is the hundredth, this is the thousandth. You've got 24 of them, so you've got no tenths. So you're going to have 0, 0,024.